As first-time homeowners, there were some things that we could only learn after going through our own renovation. Here are some of the renovation and procurement tips from our own experience for you to consider. We purchased a wall-mounted unit from IKEA or IKEA after confirming with our ID but was informed by the installation guy that it was unsafe to do so on the actual day of installation. He said that our partition wall was not reinforced and will not be able to take the weight of our TV. We had already moved in by then and didn't want to go through the entire process of hacking and cleaning up again so we left it as that and installed legs for a standing unit instead. We would have relocated the two double sockets on each side of the wall that were originally provided for by HDB. The locations of these sockets were not considered when designing the wall-mounted table. Using these wall sockets would mean that we would have exposed cables, which kind of defeats the purpose of installing an electrical compartment in the first place. Firstly, having a drawer compartment across the table gives us a lot of storage space and is very helpful in keeping our table neat. However, this means having less leg space and also prevents us from settling into probably unhealthy but comfortable sitting positions when working over a long time. On windy nights, our curtains would actually hit the fan and it's extremely irritating when it happens in the middle of the night. We would have requested for the electrical point to be installed further away from the curtains to give sufficient clearance. Apart from having curbs, another way to segregate wet and dry areas would be to have the flooring done at different heights. This would definitely look much sleeker while maintaining the function of containing water at the same time. Having the wet and dry tiles meet at the centre of the curb is not the most pleasing arrangement we can have. It would be better to follow the same divide from the floor to the wall, which means that in our case, the grey tiles should end at the end of the curb instead. After taking deep breaths across various intensities of defecation, we confirm that the HDB toilet bowl really do smell worse than the average ones. While we can always purchase a new toilet bowl, the replacement might be an issue as there's insufficient space in our master bathroom. This is an implication from being given the wrong dimensions for our common bathroom vanity and this led to a pretty tight space left for our business and we do foresee some difficulty when we prosper in the future. I really wanted a fridge with drawers and our budget at that time could only allow for a single door one which I thought was sufficient. Changing the fridge after renovation is also difficult as it would have carpentry implications so do consider your refrigerator options carefully before deciding. I would have preferred getting a stove with 3 burners instead of 2 so I can multitask and do more cooking at the same time. Similarly, changing out the stove would be an option but we would have to be mindful and choose one that fits the carpentry cutout size meant for our current model. A deeper sink would prevent water from splashing out while doing the dishes, especially if you are washing larger items like pots and cookware. However, this also depends on your dishwashing habits. If you are like me and prefer to wash your dishes against the base of the sink instead of holding it up, having a deeper sink also means that you have to bend down more while washing, although that depends on your height as well.
Our dish rack is too high and I have to tiptoe to see what's there on the tray. It's quite dangerous if you randomly grab knives and cutlery without seeing them, so it's important to consider your height and make sure that the base of your dish rack meets your eye level. We do enjoy having our compact class, but we would reconsider our choice for two main reasons. Firstly, I didn't know that choosing compact class meant that our kitchen countertop would be slim and this was not the look I was going for. Secondly, while the material is quite durable and we don't have any issues with heat bubbles, stains and scratches so far, the sound of impact is extremely loud when I slam bread dough onto the counter. We would have hacked the walls between the kitchen and the service yard and installed carpentry to have more storage space. Initially, we wanted to maintain the division between these two areas to prevent our laundry from absorbing smells from our cooking, but so far I've never closed it before, and opening the service yard windows is actually better for us as it provides more ventilation and prevents it from getting too hot while cooking. There were some uneven tiles that we chose not to pursue as they were mostly in hidden places. It might have been better to insist on their replacement as they would be exposed if we changed the layout of our house or decided to sell our flat in the future. If the dimensions of your tiles have common factors, you can also consider aligning the tile boundaries of your skirting to the floor tiles. It might not make much of a difference, but I do think that this small detail would make the entire house look a lot more coherent and well put together. Overall, we are still grateful to have a place to call our own despite its imperfections. It's impossible to expect a perfect renovation from the get-go, but I do believe in the value of intentional design and being meticulous when planning for your flat. Having a rendering or drawing is also something that we didn't have but would be extremely helpful in picturing a clear visualisation. This would give you an idea of how things would look like before you commit to the actual works in real life. If you found this video helpful, please take notes and always keep them in your thoughts while doing your own renovation. All the best for your reno and bye!